Hi, my name is Bart Polson, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show how to use StatCrunch to do bivariate regression, uh, a way of looking at the relationship between two quantitative variables in this case. Um, the first thing you'll need to do is go to StatCrunch.com, and then you'll need to log into your account. I assume you already have one. I'm going to use a data set that already exists, so I'm going to come up here to Explore to Data. And I'm going to use a data set uh, that's called YMS Table 1.15 because it's from a uh, published statistics book. Um, when I search for that one, I, it, up comes this picture of a high school. And the data set consists of information on states, one row per state. Uh, it gives the population, the average SAT verbal and math scores, percent taking, no high school diploma, teacher pay, and if I broaden that out a little bit, you can see it's teacher pay, average teacher pay in thousands of dollars, the region and percent of population over 65. Okay, good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the association between teacher pay in thousands of dollars and SAT math scores, uh, the averages for both states. I already did this as a correlation coefficient and as a scatter plot, but right now I'm going to take it one step further and look at the regression equation as well as a scatter plot with a regression line through it. The way to do that in StatCrunch is to come over here to Stat, click on that, and come down to Regression. And for this one, I'm going to do what's called Simple Linear. Simple means I'm using one predictor variable, teacher salary in this case, and one outcome variable, average SAT math scores in this case. It's called Linear because it's going to draw a straight line through the scatter plot and it's going to assess how well the data fit that straight line and what the slope and intercept of that straight line is. Now it's possible to do regression with other shapes uh, of curves and whatnot, but and it's actually not that difficult. You usually do what's called a transformation of the data to work on that, but we may cover that another time, but not right now. In any case, I'm going to use stat regression simple linear. And when I get there, I'm going to select my x variable. That's the one that I want to use as a predictor. In this case, I'm going to use um, teacher pay in thousands of dollars. Um, as my predictor and as the outcome, I'm going to look at SAT math scores. I'm not going to do any restrictions or combination variables, so I'm going to skip to the next one. Um, I'm not interested in these right now. I may talk about those another time. I hit the next box. The one that is really important is this one right here. Plot the fitted line. That will give me a scatter plot with a straight regression line through it. Now all the rest of these can be very very important as what are called diagnostic charts to see if you meet the assumptions of uh, simple linear regression, things like linearity, normality, and uh, presence of outliers and whatnot. But again, I'm not going to worry about those right now. Um, this is just in case I want more than one output on a page. I don't, so I hit Calculate, and great. Now what it does is it brings up two pages, and I'm going to talk about both of them. This first one right here is the actual statistical results. It's the numbers. But to put it into perspective, I'm going to come down here and hit Next to go to the scatter plot first. Now, I, uh, in a previous tutorial, I did a correlation coefficient, which was the number, and I also did a scatter plot, uh, this exact same picture for these variables. The only difference here is that this one has a regression line that runs through it. Well, the other difference is that I'm not able to change the uh, labels and the titles on this one. But I do get the regression line, so you can see that, strangely, it's a downhill relationship. That is, in states where teachers are paid more, there is also a lower average SAT score. Uh, it's a difference of probably 45 points from the lowest to highest paid states. So it's not huge, but it is enough to matter. In any case, what I'm going to do now is now that I have the picture, the scatter plot with the negative line through it, I'm going to look at the actual numbers behind the relationship. This tells me that I'm doing simple linear regression. My dependent variable is the outcome variable, the thing that I'm trying to predict. In this case, it's average SAT math scores for the state. The independent variable means the one that I'm using as the predictor, in this case, teacher paying thousands of dollars. Now, 
is a little note, the terms independent and dependent variable are from experimental research where you have a manipulated independent variable and a dependent variable, which is seen as the effect or the result of that causal variable. In this case, that's not true, so it would be more accurate to simply label these as predictor and outcome. I wish they would do that because uh, those terms are also easier to understand, but you know, there you have it. This line right here is the actual regression equation, and what it tells us is that the average SAT math score for a state uh, the predicted value is equal to 611.998, that is, give each state that value for its SAT math score, and then for each step up in teacher pay in thousands of dollars, subtract two points from the average SAT score for that uh, state. The sample size is 51, that'd be the 50 states plus Washington, D.C., the correlation coefficient between these two is negative 3773, and if you were to go back to an earlier one and look at the correlation matrix I, I did, you would see that number there. Uh, perhaps a more important one right here is this one. It's the R squared. It's simply the square of this correlation coefficient, but the R squared, uh, which sometimes is called the coefficient of determination, or more often the proportion of variance accounted for, um, is the R squared is a nice indication of the strength of the relationship. The advantage of this is that correlation coefficients, the one that's right here, are not linear. A 0 0.4 is not twice as strong as a 0 0.2. You have to square them. You get 0 0.16 and 0 0.4. So it's actually four times as strong. Um, the R squared is probably the best way to compare uh, statistical output and relationships. Anyhow, in this case, it tells us that if we know teacher pay, we can account for or predict 14% of the variance in average SAT math scores for our 51 localities. Down here at the parameter estimates, you'll see that this 611.998 is the same one that's up here. It's simply the intercept, the y-intercept for the line. The slope, which indicates the change in average SAT scores for each change step in teacher pay is negative 0.20 and so on, which is the same number that's right here. Now, one additional thing that we want to look at is this number here on the side. This is called the p-value. This indicates this is a null hypothesis significance test for each coefficient. This one right here tells us that it's extremely unlikely that the intercept of 611 is due to random error if we assume that the true intercept is zero. But you know, with SAT scores, that's not possible, so that's not a big deal. The one that's probably more important is the slope, which is this number, the 2089, so on, where the p-value is 0063. The rule here is if p-values are less than 05, then that indicates that there is a low probability of getting something like this through random sampling when there is in fact no effect or the, the coefficient is zero in the population. Anyhow, this lets us know that the negative coefficient is a reliable number. Um, this 6-3 down here is also the uh, probability value for the entire equation, but because there's only one predictor variable, this and this are the same value. And I think that for uh, the relationship between two quantitative variables, between, again, teacher paying thousands of dollars and SAT math scores, we've now established what the scatter plot looks like, that it does fit a downhill straight line. We have the regression equation for it, and that's probably enough for right now.